I'm Diana Felsen with 4 for 4 Science, where we delve into the new frontier of scientific discovery in only four minutes. Impressive. A mysterious space object is set to enter Earth's atmosphere next month. James, is this the end of humanity as we know it, or simply space debris? Well, obviously we're all going to die, but not really. It's just space debris. That's so not reassuring. This mysterious object is probably going to land in the Indian Ocean about 62 miles off the coast of Sri Lanka. Not a big thing, maybe a maximum of about six and a half feet in, mm -hmm. in diameter. Probably part of a rocket engine, they're not really sure. But yeah, but it's strange that like, this is going to po pop into the Earth's atmosphere. I think it's great that its name is WT1190F has WTF in it, because we don't know exactly what it is. But I think this is a really great opportunity for science. We, we've never been able to track space debris like this before and see it as it burns up in real time. So it may seem scary, but it's actually a really cool opportunity for astronomers. I think this is also a great opportunity to track something that's relatively benign. I mean, it's going to land in the Indian Ocean, but it's not really going to hurt anybody. So this is a great way to practice tracking something. And in the future, if something really were to come to Earth and um, be potentially dangerous, we'll be ready. Right, like James just said, we're all going to eventually <laughs> die. Hopefully not by any kind of huge object falling from space. Asteroid, comet, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Always the bear of good news. Comet Lovejoy appears to be a well-stocked bar in space, Lauren. Explain why this comet is any 21 and older's best friend. So for the first time, astronomers have seen ethyl alcohol spewing forth from this comet in space. <laughs> That's the same alcohol that we consume in our beverages on the weekend. Maybe, maybe you. Um, <laughs> responsibly. <laughs> responsibly, yes. Um, but this comet is spewing 500 bottles worth of wine every second. So you'd be having a very good time if you're partying on this comet. <laughs> <laughs> this really should be the party comet. And I'm just like, it's so cool at the moment. We're getting all these news stories. Yeah, it's a comet. And we're talking about like a chemical con construction, etc. But it's also stuff that's very newsy that plays really well. So, you know, good job, NASA, for getting this. And a great name. <laughs> comet exactly. Lovejoy. Yeah. And if we think about comets hitting Earth and really starting life, the fact that we saw such complex um, organic molecules in the comet shows or gives us a better opportunity to think about different ways in which um, life could have started on Earth. All right. For the important question, how many people do you think after hearing this story are going to be just waiting outside their homes <laughs> with their mouths open, hoping to get a taste of free alcohol from this comet? <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't recommend that, but, you know. Right. Take our experts' advice. <laughs> As big mammals die off, the planet suffers a serious poop shortage. I'm a real journalist. James, discussing fecal matter is rather sophomoric, but it actually is a potentially serious problem. Oh, no, I live to discuss this story. I really do. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, like big mammals, whales, elephants, rhinos, you know, we see them dying off, mm -hmm. being killed off. But they, you know, their poop plays a big part in the natural ecosystem. So if you look at yes. the example of whales, like they were playing a big role in kind of taking phosphorus from the floor of the ocean up to the uh, basically up to the um uh, the atmosphere up to, surface. up to the surface that's <laughs> the word thank you very much yes <laughs> i'm basically moving that around but as the dying off it's a problem mm -hmm. I think this also gives us a great opportunity now that everybody's talking about it to really try to reverse um, the, sort of the damage that we've done. Whale populations have gone down so drastically in the past couple of decades, but now that everyone's talking about their poop, maybe we can um, <laughs> try to use that as a way to uh, bring up their populations. Uh -huh. And it's a really great reminder just how we can throw the balance of our ecosystem out of whack just by, you know, really small changes like this. So us killing off whales, it's like changing the phosphorus rising to the surface by 77 percent. A very delicate balance our ecosystem is. Bacon may increase cancer's risk, but it's not the worst thing for your body. And for those that love bacon, thank goodness. Claire, please tell us what the real deal is because everybody on social media has lost their minds. Yes, yeah, so scientists have actually been thinking about this for a really long time, um, but I think not all is lost. We can still eat our bacon, um, but I think it also gives us an opportunity to, while this is a new finding, mm -hmm. um, to say, oh, we'll use this old idea of everything in moderation, and yes, we can have our bacon, but maybe not every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so obviously processed foods are really problematic around you know, colorectal cancers and stuff like that, and yeah, and I love bacon. So yes, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not the best for you, but it's maybe not as bad as people thought as well. Right, and it's by far not as bad for you as smoking is. It's, it's something like if you were to eat 50 grams, which is about like a couple deli meats of, of food per day, uh, that'll increase your lifetime risk by 18%. It's not a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, if you're going to get screened for colorectal cancer and remove those polyps, that's going to really save you from getting cancer down the line. So cutting meat out of your diet may be good, 
but getting screened is much better for you in the long run. And it's a simple cliche, you are what you eat, and in anything, moderation is key. So bacon, not every day. Maybe bacon once a week or every couple of weeks. Now I know we think, let us know what you think on Twitter with the hashtag 444science. Is turkey bacon also considered a problem? Does anyone know? It's processed.